Coming up on DTNS, Australia wants to scan your face to verify your age for certain websites. Why Google agreed to buy Fitbit and teaching rats to drive cars. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, November 1st, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Mystery, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the uh, show's producer, Roger Chang. And, of course, we're uh, very happy to be joined today by Peter Wells, tech journalist at Sydney Morning Herald and The Age. Peter, it's been too long. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, it's really, really great to be back. Uh, we are going to have some good talking today, folks. We've already had some about uh, Sarah's need to eat Top Ramen yesterday <laughs> and more. If you want to get that wider conversation, of course, you need Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Google began rolling out incognito mode in Google Maps for Android users. When in incognito mode, Google won't save location information to a Google account, update any shared location history, or use account data to personalize maps. China's three state-owned cellular carriers, China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom, began offering 5G service in the country. Pricing is based on speed, with China Unicom offering a gigabit per second speed for the equivalent of $45 a month. Beijing currently has 10,000 of 13,000 5G base stations installed, and the central government wants 5G coverage over Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Guangzhou by the end of 2019. China Mobile claims it will offer 5G service in more than 50 cities this year. Sources tell CNBC that NBC Universal's Peacock streaming TV service may be free for all users with ads. Comcast has said it would make the service available for free to its cable TV and internet subscribers, but has not weighed in on non-Comcast customers. NBC is considering making the ad-supported version free for everybody and charging for an ad-free version as well. There may also be other tiers of service to pay for with premium content. Peacock will air between three and five minutes of advertising per hour. Waterfront Toronto has decided to move forward with five months of consultations about Alphabet's Sidewalk Labs proposal to create a 12-acre community on Lake Ontario called Keyside. Sidewalk Labs wants to show off its smart city technology with AI-driven heating and cooling, robotic freight transportation, a lot of sensors, that kind of thing. Toronto's government will maintain control of privacy and data policy for the area. All right, let's talk a little bit about Google announcing Friday morning it has agreed to acquire Fitbit in a deal worth $2.1 billion. Google SVP of hardware Rick Osterloh wrote that it is, quote, an opportunity to invest even more in Wear OS, as well as introduce made by Google wearable devices into the market. And Google makes laptops, it makes tablets, or it has. It make, makes phones, makes headphones. It has not made its own watch yet. Sounds like now it will. Google bought part of Fossil's research and technology group in uh, January, so that will fit right in there. For its own part, Fitbit wrote that it, quote, will continue to put users in control of their data and will remain transparent about the data it collects and why. Fitbit also specified that data collected by Fitbit devices will not be used to target ads for Google, and Fitbit pledged to remain platform agnostic. You're not going to lose your iOS support, says Fitbit deal is expected to close sometime next year. So I always like to follow these sorts of stories up with the reassurance of nothing is changing today. It'll be months and months and months, maybe a year before this is actually closed. And we'll try to do our best to tell you the day that it closed. But uh, Sarah, it, it does sound like that Fitbit you've been wearing on your wrist is going to be a Google product at some point. Yeah. And I have no problem with that, uh, especially if, if, if the, if, if, if the company is saying nothing will change for iOS users because I am an iOS user and that does matter to me is going to change, at least not in the short term. Um, that's great. Fitbit has done a, an extremely good job. And I, I am, I am currently testing the Versa two as my live with it segment over the course of the next three months. We're probably about halfway into it now. So I have been paying a lot of attention to uh, the the sort of Fitbit activity tracker uh, ecosystem, especially when you compare it to something like the Apple Watch, and they are different, but it is a very robust ecosystem. I would hate for it to change, but uh, Fitbit needed to be bought. Uh, the 
Rumors were that uh, Google was going to buy Fitbit or was at least sniffing around for months now. So this is not a really big surprise. I just, yeah, I, I will be interested to see how this changes anything for Fitbit going down the road because we have seen Google buy uh, uh, independent companies in the past and things have changed. Yeah, this is a smart thing for Google to do, right? Which is yeah. uh, get into the wearable business by uh, the, the way they're doing their other things, which is they provide the operating system, Chrome OS, Android, Wear OS, uh, but make their own flagship version. And instead of starting from scratch, buying the expertise of a brand that's very well respected in Fitbit, uh, yeah. Fitbit probably isn't going to hurt from getting the boost of being part of Google. They've done a good job of hanging in there, but there were some questions if they could really hold out in the wearables market on their own. So this gives them a boost. Uh, Peter, what do you make of this deal? Yeah, um, I, I am remembered, uh, sorry, I remember about two years ago, I, I sat down uh, in the same week with um, the CEO of Fitbit and the CEO of uh, GoPro. And I thought that they were really two interesting uh, companies kind of on the verge of an existential crisis because they were both seeing their market kind of uh, being eaten away by um, smartphones and and the Apple Watch. And I don't know, I just remember say, saying to the Fitbit uh, CEO that like, look, mate, you've got to um, move into software because now that I own an Apple Watch, I'm never going to use your platform. And I used to love your platform. I used to love Fitbit. Lean into software, lean into what you do well, or you're dead. Um, and... Funnily enough, that was the last interview I ever got with him. Um, and I, um, uh, yeah, I just kind of, at that point, I just thought, well, you know, they're going to get bought by someone. And so I, I think it is a good fit. Like you said, Google um, needs a boost in its uh, Wear platform because it really hasn't moved much in a long time. So, uh, and, and Apple has clearly become the market leader when it comes to wearables. Yeah, well, it is a bit of a good fit. Moving on to uh, some Apple news or some former Apple news anyway. Reuters has a story about former Apple wireless chief Ruben Caballero, who is now the chief wireless strategist for a company called Kisa. If you haven't heard of Kisa, the company is developing a wireless chip meant to transfer data as fast as wired transfer by placing two devices next to each other. Caballero also wants to get rid of cables inside a phone, broken connector wires, uh, say to a camera for example, made inside a phone, can interfere with cell reception. Instead, Kisa's chips would use high frequencies that don't cause interference at all. The LG V50 uses a Kisa chip to connect to its second screen, and the company is also working with video display makers and li li LiDAR sensor makers. Yeah, this is, I mean, I think all of us want to get rid of cables, right? None of us want to have cables, especially those yeah. of us using dongles for everything with a MacBook Pro. Uh, but I think what's extra interesting about this startup is the idea of getting rid of the cables inside of the phone in order to make it a, a little less likely that something wears out of breaks and also uh, reduces interference. I mean, to me, that's a, that, that's a, that's a pretty huge uh, ad advantage and adds to the durability of your phone. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and oh, sorry, go on. Oh no, Peter, please go. <laughs> well, I was just going to say absolutely, and I'm sure um, Apple would love to, you know, squeeze down their devices even smaller as well if they could get rid of some of those internal wires and connectors. Um, I mean, I mean, all manufacturers would. You know, I I am, uh, you know, I I joke with friends sometimes where I'm like, I don't even know where a pen is or like a pad of paper. Like I, the wireless office is something that, you know, was promised to us a while ago and it doesn't really work yet, but we're getting there. And this is just one more reason that I, I'm like, okay, we're getting there. And so I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. And like you say, Peter, if you've got a little more room in there, you can actually uh, have more battery and uh, more room for more battery is great. Well, uh, scientists at the University of Richmond wanted to study the effect of environment on learning in rats. Unlike previous studies involving mazes, the rats in these studies were taught to drive. I'm not joking. A robot car kit was equipped with three copper wires connected to an aluminum plate on the floor of the very tiny car and three copper bars above. A rat standing on the aluminum bar and gripping any of the bars would engage the motor. One bar turned it to the left, one made it go straight, one turned it to the right. The rats learned to drive after eight weeks of three five-minute driving sessions a week. 
The study would then vary the starting position of the car, the orientation of the car, where they put the treats. And afterward, that when they were done with all of those experiments, rats were allowed the opportunity to just drive around on their own with no food present, just to see if they would do it. One group of five rats, and this is the point of the story, one group of five rats lived in a large cage with multiple levels and objects to play with, and another group of six rats lived in pairs, so three pairs in standard cages. And the idea was to see if they had this stimulating environment, did they learn faster, did it affect their stress levels versus the ones that just lived in pairs in regular cages. The five that lived in the more interesting environment learned to drive faster and were more interested in driving even after the food was gone. Turned out the stress uh, levels were about the same for, for all the rats. You know, it, I don't know. But as a rat lover, I know not, <laughs> not everybody loves rats, but man, this is so cool. I mean, just, ju 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 just, just to, you know, just to kind of, uh, uh, download the idea that, that the rats were so able to kind of, uh, adapt in such a short period of time. I mean, they're smart animals, right? That's, that's why they're, they're often, uh, used in science experiments, but, uh, I, for, for myself, welcome our new rat, uh, driver overlords. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they they learn to drive faster than I do. <laughs> uh, they they don't drive well if you if you look at the the video. They they yeah, do well. tend to run run into things a lot. So, uh, but a, a rat's not going to be picking me up in an Uber anytime soon. Well, <laughs> you probably don't want it to. Uh, but then again, you're losing sight of the fact that a rat is driving when you say that, right? Like <laughs> just just the. the this this idea that that rats just you know pushing levers can can move a car around to get to the treats uh, is 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 pretty great and it shows that stimulation and environment plays a part. A lot of times people are like, well, what does it matter what you put on the walls and how you decorate yourself? And uh, it, it it does it matters. Uh, people respond better to to more stimulating environments. It it makes a big difference. Well, on the subject of driverless cars, or whether, you know, you would have nobody or a rat in front of you, TechCrunch's Ed Niedermeyer has a report on a Waymo car, kind of the update on, on Waymo's uh, uh, test that's been going on in the Phoenix suburb areas of Chandler, Arizona. No driver. No driver in this car. This was not on a closed course. It was not pre-selected routes. It was not a press demo. This was a car that was hailed using the Waymo One app for a 10-minute ride from a park to a coffee shop made by a real person doing a real thing in the real life. These cars are now available for, uh, for a few hundred members of Waymo's early rider program. The riders must live in a certain zip code, can only get driverless rides within a geofenced area, so it is still limited, but it is real. They also must sign NDAs. They are not charged for the ride as well. Uh, his ride started with a call to a human rider assistance team to address any uh, any questions. Niedermeyer wrote that he was impressed by how it handled an unprotected left turn, even inched forward at stop signs to indicate it meant to proceed, and was over uh, also overly cautious at, tra at traffic spacing and what he called overactive path planning. Kind of just sounds like a cautious driver to me, the things that it didn't yes, do it as does. well. Yes, it does. And it sounds, even... it sounds like the kind of thing that you'd want your Uber driver to do if they were <laughs> behind the wheel, right? You know, you're well, like, I'd rather you be cautious than weird. And Niedermeyer wrote that, <laughs> well, these are weird things that you don't expect normal people to do. But Niedermeyer even said, he's like, most people probably wouldn't have even noticed them. It's just that he's paying close attention. He's like, okay, I don't know if a human driver sure. would normally do that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I, I found this fascinating because he was already moving on in his article on the idea of, okay, so what should the experience be when you get into one of these cars, right? Where he's right. like, I'm now in this car that feels like a dream because no one's driving it, but it's making left turns and keeping pace with the other cars. And he's like, I'm already on to, to the idea of like, how do you make sure that the environment works? Like what is the interface people should have when they're in the car? Where should they sit? Should they have human action interaction at, at all points? Because we're used to talking to a driver and saying, oh, hey, can you, you know, let me off here? That sort of thing. Like yeah. now we're getting to those kinds of questions. I think that's fascinating. I think also what's fascinating is, uh, you know, the, 
the idea that the car is being overly cautious, you go, well, that's good. Of course, you know, you want, you want, you want that with a driverless car. You want it to be, you know, as safe as possible because we're all trying to get used to, you know, our new normal. But if that was a person behind the car, you might be like, pick up the pace, man. Like we might be, you know, having to sort of recalibrate to a safety first version of driving that humans have 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 not been respecting for a long time. Peter, would you get into one of these? I would, I would, um, and I am, you know, I drive like a, an old man, um, but so, so I would very much appreciate a, a slow driving um, a driverless car. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like that idea of actually that um, driverless cars means uh, the rest of society needs to kind of slow down and pay a bit more attention because um, I'm terrified of uh, other drivers on the road. I, I, I'm much. I would feel much happier with a bunch of uh, driverless cars than some of the people I see driving and texting and speeding and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, a driverless I mean, car can text while driving because it can multitask, literally. But I mean, something as simple as saying, well, the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, right? Okay. Well, you could, you could do that. You could go a little under there and hopefully stay to the right of the road or you could speed, but, Driverless cars aren't going to be able to do that. They can't do that legally. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna have a reality where things are actually working much more on the grid than than what humans actually do, which is I don't know. It's kind of fascinating to me, and I I don't know how it's gonna work. Um, I'm sure people will grumble about it, but you know, in general, safety first. Cave caveat here, of course, this is a small area, pre-planned yeah. route in a dry state. I mean, we're not saying uh, driverless cars will go everywhere tomorrow, uh, but this is a significant moment. And I thought it was worth paying attention to like, wow, you've, we've got people getting into cars that don't have any humans in them right now. Uh, yeah. And that, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Apple TV plus launched Friday for $4 and 99 cents a month. Uh, though you get it free. If you bought a phone, tablet, Mac, or Apple TV from Apple, since September 10th. Uh, launch titles are The Morning Show, C, For All Mankind, Dickinson, Snoopy in Space, Ghost Rider, Helpsters, as well as the documentary feature The Elephant Queen and Oprah's Book Club Talk Show. Uh, Dickinson has the whole season, For All Mankind just has three episodes and will come out weekly. Other series vary on, on that as well. Most of them are weekly. Uh, the shows are available to download for offline viewing. Some users are already reporting trouble getting the free offer. MacRumors.com says if you're having this trouble, go to tv.apple.com and log in on your desktop using your Apple ID. Uh, the free 12-month Apple TV Plus subscription offer should then be available. And then after accepting it on the website, you can go back to your iPhone, sign out of the Apple TV app, close it, relaunch it, sign in again, and then you should see it there. Apple says customers need to have their device updated to the latest version of iOS, which may be causing some of these issues. But uh, it's there in 100-plus countries uh, worldwide Who's excited? I'm I'm excited if there are shows that I want to watch, you know, just like any other service. Sure. Like, you know, we've been talking about Apple TV Plus for some time, even before it was called Apple TV Plus. And, uh, you know, now that it's here, it's almost like, wow, really? Okay, cool. Um, and there are some uh, shows that, I mean, I haven't seen any of these shows, so I have zero opinion. Um, there are uh, celebrities that I, you know, and actors and actresses that I, I like and respect that are, that are part of some of these vehicles. So I, I hope it's a good thing, but I, I mean, I think it all depends on what's the hit, what's the hit, you know, what's the hit that, you know, that Hulu had or that Netflix had, or that uh, Amazon uh, had and Apple needs the same thing. Yeah, I think uh, the AV Club has got some incredible reviews of um, all of Apple TV's content. Um, so if you are interested, uh, I think they've they've written up some of the best stuff so far, um, and they haven't been particularly kind to most of the shows that um, that Apple have launched. Um, although they they do say for all mankind is um, absolutely a fantastic show to to at least try out. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the only one of the list that. Um, I'm interested in, obviously, Ronald D. Moore. Um, you'll watch whatever Ronald D. Moore uh, makes if you're an old BSG fan. So, um, yeah, that's that's all I'm uh, kind of here for at the moment. But I guess that's all you really need. Like, I mean, you know, HBO has gotten, a, uh, gotten along very well with just 
one key show that everyone needs to watch that, you know, is part of the conversation that, um, you know, and ob obviously Netflix goes the other way where they have so many shows you can't even keep up. But, um, yeah, I think if, if Apple can just make sure, even if they spend a hell of a lot of money and make uh, apparently the morning show is terrible, but, um, you know, they, they can have these failures as long as they have just that one key show that becomes part of the zeitgeist that we all need to talk about and we all need to watch. Well, uh, to, to wrap this up, uh, my, my wife loves the morning show. She, she got a sneak peek at it uh, from Rotten Tomatoes. So she's, she's going against the, the current there. Uh, everybody seems to agree about For All Mankind. And the point of this is most of the Apple users out there probably upgraded some piece of equipment since September 10th uh, because of all the new equipment that came out. So a lot of people are getting this free for a year. Students get it as part of their Apple Music subscription now. So Apple is is building up a bunch of people into this universe very quickly, especially as it's going to continue to sell these new devices uh, into the holidays. It almost doesn't matter what quality these shows are at the top. People are just going to have it. They're going to experiment with it. And like you say, they'll probably find one maybe two that they like. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. Australia's Department of Home Affairs has proposed using facial scans to confirm a user's age before letting them access adult sites like gambling or porn. The idea would be to match the facial scan with Home Affairs data like a driver's license photo, which are part of the document verification service and face verification service being set up to fight identity theft. So you'd be using that service for another purpose. Of course, that service is not up and running yet. Uh, it's waiting for the passage of the Identity Matching Services Bill of 2019, which was just rejected by the Bipartisan Joint Intelligence and Security Committee because they wanted it to put in better privacy safeguards. So you're not going to get any of this right away, but Peter, what, what's your feeling on uh, Australia <clears throat> approaching this in a different way than the UK did, but the UK ended up yeah. backing off of its plan? Yeah, it's, it's bizarre that we're, we're heading down this path after the UK spent, I think, two years trying to, to push this through. And after two years and I don't know how many pounds or euros that they spent on it, they decided that it just wasn't worth the effort. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, the entire... So, yeah, you do have to look at this as, of course, the, the, the porn angle gets all the, the mentions and the clicks um, sure. uh, because that's the interesting side of the story. But it is part of an overarching um, and kind of scary bill that um, that was introduced. And I don't know, I, I'm, I'm in the words of Bart Simpson, I, I don't have pride in my government for once, but I, <laughs> I do have less shame um, that they, they rejected this bill outright. Like the, um, the, the bill itself was kind of pushed through by um, Peter Dutton, um, who is um, a very uh, uh, divisive figure in this country. Um, he's he's not a very well-liked politician in most capital cities. So, um, and of course, you know, he's lovingly referred to as the potato because his head kind of looks like a potato. So um, <laughs> when, when the news first came out, Twitter was just full of people like drawing smiley faces on potatoes and holding <laughs> them up to their webcams. So um, yeah, it, it was very quickly kind of rejected and mocked. Um, and, and I think the, the public sentiment there was, um, th thankfully, there was that porn angle or that, that silly angle to for everyone to kind of suddenly mobilise, and uh, it meant that uh, there was so much pressure put on the over overall bill that, um, yeah, as you say, the bipartisan committee just said, look, this this bill is so badly written, uh, it has no um, protections in place for what you're trying to roll out. Because yeah, so Peter Dutton is also in charge of borders, so what he was wanting to do was basically put on um, facial recognition cameras that they're using uh, in the passport areas of airports um, on like in every shopping mall. It, it was a little bit scary. So um, I'm glad to see that uh, the, the entire bill was rejected outright. And, um, you know, we, we as Australians, we accept a hell of a lot more kind of intrusions into our privacy than I, I think Americans would ever do. Um, Peter, like we, why, we, why do you think that is? I honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I just think that um, you've uh, you've always had the idea of you know liberty and and free speech and all of those kind of things built into your very being. Whereas you know we we don't have free speech in in any part of our. I mean, we do have free speech as a concept, but it's not written down anywhere. Like mm -hmm. um, it's and you know it's one of the reasons. And we do have actually very strong defamation laws, which means um, you honestly can't say a lot. Um, you can't say the kind of things that, say, South Park gets away with. We could never have a show like that um, on Australian TV. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 an interesting 
Um, it, it, it's one of those things where we differ very much as as people, but. Um, even so, even so, we've had, there have been times in our history, the, back, back in the 80s, um, I'm old enough to remember this, but back in the 80s, um, uh, uh, the Labor government actually wanted to introduce uh, what they called the Australia card, which would be um, basically like a driver's license, but with all your other information attached to it. So your social security and your Medicare details and all of that kind of stuff. And you had to, the idea was that you had to carry it at all times and you could be, it could be scanned at any point. Um, and again, that was one of those things that I have no idea. I, I, I'm, I can't remember why it was introduced or, or discussed, um, but it was outright rejected after a really long and bloody battle of this is insane. This is an, an absolute overreach of, of, um, of kind of looking into our privacy. There's no way um, we're going to accept that. So I kind of, kind of do feel that um, this is going to be uh, the same way that this bill plays out, that um, a, a very uh, a very tough on crime, tough on borders, um, former ex-cop like uh, Peter Dutton is going to try his best to get this through because this is clearly his passion project. Um, but the rest of the country, um, you know, it, it helps that he's doing it because no one likes him. <laughs> so um, uh, I think the rest of the country uh, is probably going to um, reject most of most of what he. Uh, proposes and 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 to be clear like this isn't collecting faces this is saying we already have this stuff on record we want to use it for these purposes so i, I think the idea of using it to f fight identity theft probably not controversial yeah. using it to then log whether you can log into a gam let's just say gambling site to be even less controversial that's something people are like wait so what are the privacy protections like okay if you want to make sure to verify it's me fine but then where is that stored? How is it used? Who else can access it? And that's why it got rejected for being too vague. And I think that's probably right. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 um the one thing to take away from this is uh, voting is really important. So if <laughs> please, America, um, if you haven't enrolled <laughs> to vote yet, enroll to vote and next year vote because we're all watching and we're a little concerned. And that's all I'll say. Well, you know, some people who are concerned but are also our allies, certainly on this show, are the people who participate in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on others at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We also have a Facebook group. It's fun. Join it if you haven't already. Facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Scott wrote in about our conversation yesterday, and it was, you know, largely in part of, you know, my sort of harrowing last week, um, and it, cell service being down, and and and, you know, what wanting uh, to understand what companies that we're supposed to blame. Scott says, you know what works when the power goes out? Long after cell phone batteries and tower batteries and generators go down, my landline. Not the VoIP lines from Vonage and cable companies, but an honest-to-goodness copper pair from the telco. Telephone lines are self-powered, and around here, at least where Scott lives, are often buried, so they keep working where everything else has stopped. It's a tried-and-true technology that exists and is available now. Not in my house, it's not. Um, <laughs> we've just been moved to the NBN, and, and part of that... Uh, the National Broadband Network, which I know you guys have talked about a hundred times, but um, part of that is they cut your landline. So, oh damn. <laughs> yeah, and 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 landlines can also go down, and landlines aren't going to help Sarah when she's evacuating from her house on a mandatory evacuation no, and wants to not. call from her car to check to make sure her mom is headed in the right direction. So, yeah, landlines are great in emergencies in a lot of cases, uh, but I don't think that excuses the carriers from not putting in proper battery backups uh, and not making sure that they can extend the time that mobile service is available, uh, which is which is what our story was about yesterday. Yeah, well, Scott, I mean, you make a good point and uh, landlines are a dying breed. And uh, it's funny when somebody else asked me on Twitter, well, did you have a landline? You know, if you had to call somebody and I was like, huh. I don't know. I didn't ask. I don't think anyone had one. So, you know, it's kind of a funny thing that, you know, we're all kind of dealing with in times of strife. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and honestly, like, you know, uh, loudspeakers also that you, you know, that you have in your right. own house could, could help too. There's, there's lots of things that can help. Right. Uh, but, but I don't think that excuses the mobile companies from, getting out of doing something that would have helped people in an emergency. 
Absolutely not. Uh, you know who does help? Our patrons, especially our master and grandmaster level patrons, including Chris Allen, Ken Hayes, and Brad Schick. All right, let's check in with Len Peralta, who has been illustrating today's show. What have you drawn, Len? Yeah, you know, I'm glad to hear that Australia kind of wised up and didn't, uh, you know, kind of rejected the idea of facial recognition uh, for gambling and porn sites. So, uh, but in case it ends up coming back up again, <laughs> I think that uh, this is something that I think we should all maybe consider, at least at, if you're in Australia, which is, uh, I'll just call it the Spank Shield the official Aussie Spank Shield, which is basically just a bunch of masks that protect your identity online. Uh, this is our course set up for Australia. You got your Russell Crowe, you got your Nicole Kidman, your Chris Hemsworth that you can wear while you're looking at gambling <laughs> at porn sites, or basically just a koala that fits mm -hmm. both male yeah. or female. So it's, It was uh, interesting to find out when they ended up launching this five years from now that only koalas were logging into gambling sites. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting thing. Yes, a very interesting scenario. So uh, yeah, this might be a good uh, something to put up on the wall just to remind yourself that maybe eventually we may all want to be fitted for koala masks. I mean, or you could just cut them a... out. Can right. I get a print size version, please? <laughs> yes, we can. For we're all friend. gonna we're all gonna do this. This is all gonna be part of part of. Uh, it's gonna be just like government issued, I think. Um, but this is available right now in my online store, also at my Patreon, patreon.com uh, forward slash Len. And I also just want to rem remind people that the naming uh, rights for the DTNS Rise of Skywalker inspired poster are still available. You can go to my store at lenperaltstore.com. It's right there on the front page. You have until 11:15 to get your name on the poster, and it's a really cool collectible too. So. There you go. Oh, Len, great work as always. I mean, Thank we're you. just in awe of your, of, of, you know, <laughs> I, w I wish I was a drawer, but no, I'm, I'm not. Just, but, you know, I'm just thinking of protecting Len. all of us. That's all that's, I'm doing. So. That's why we have Len, you know, and koalas. Who's, what's not to like? Speaking of koalas, hey, Peter Wells. Uh, good, to <laughs> <laughs> good to see you today. Um, wow. It's been too long. Um, it has, let, it has. Let, let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Okay, uh, yeah, the easiest place is Twitter, of course. Um, I just deleted my Facebook account, which feels so good. Please do that oh, if you can. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah it, it actually wasn't as painful as I thought. It was just Messenger. I, I did it, go the whole way and deleted Instagram as well, which w broke my heart. But mm. uh, anyway, um, yeah, sorry. If you go to Peter Wells uh, on Twitter, uh, I link to – I've got two columns a week now for the paper. So one is about technology and the other one is about podcasts. So I think uh, probably two areas that your listeners might be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, feel free to uh, follow me over on Twitter. We have new Patreon rewards. They shipped out today. If you are at the $2 level or above, uh, you can see the new DTNS GDI cookbook download link at patreon.com slash DTNS. Go over there and get it right now. Uh, also, we got uh, uh, links went out for people to watch our show rundown. I see a few people peeking in there uh, right now. If you want to uh, see us put the show together every day, and it gives you access to all the previous shows tabs as well. Behind the scenes chats are available for people. Sign up right now at patreon.com slash DTNS. If you have feedback for us, our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. See you all Monday. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>